the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to take this opportunity to greet the leadership of the school, the Abba institution, and thank God for the leadership they have given us and the training they have given us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Also want to greet my fellow students who have come to this conference and it is a great honor for me to be sharing the word of God with you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. My name is Mbegeni Mkadi. I represent Tembisa Campus. I'll be sharing the word of God with you from the book of Luke chapter 14. We're going to read from verse 18 till 21. It reads us. But they all with one accord began to make excuses. The first one said to him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. I, I ask you to have me excused. And the second one said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I must go to test them. I ask you that you have me excused. Verse 20, still another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So the, ser the servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in here the poor and the maimed, and the lame and the, the blind. Shall we bless the Lord? We bless you, Father, in me, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The title of my message today says, Do not decline God's invitation. Amen. This title is based on the scriptures we have read from verse 18 to 21. This is, we know that most of Jesus' teachings were based on parables. So a parable, perhaps, before we can dwell deep into this story to understand what it was all about and what it means, maybe we need to understand what is a parable. So a parable is a true, life, is a true to life story taken from everyday common life, which, con which is constructed around one main idea to illustrate a moral or a spiritual lesson. The main reason or purpose of the parable is to teach one truth, to make one point, illustrate one truth, to answer a question, and to correct wrong teaching. I want to start off by laying a basic facts around the book, the author, and perhaps why the book was written, and to whom it was written to. We know this book, we have read, is a book of Luke, so it was written by a man called Luke, who was a believer of Jesus Christ, and professionally who was a physician and a doctor. The book was written to a character called Theophilus, which means the lover of God, which basically means everyone loves God and was given his life to God, this book is applicable to him. <coughs> the purpose of the book was written to give an account on the life and the times of Jesus Christ. From his birth, to his baptism, to his ministry, his teachings, the miracles, and the, saved, the, the people that were saved, all the way to his death and his resurrection. In this book of Luke, we find a total of 24 parables, which is the book that has got more parables than other books. The book of, book of Matthew has got 23, the book of Mark has got only 8. The book of Luke, we find 24. Now, where we have just read, it's one of those 24 parables. We have read that from verse 18 to verse 21, we read a story in fact, from verse 1 of chapter 14, we are told that it was on a Sabbath day and Jesus was in Jerusalem. 
he was in a house of a, of a Pharisee. He was sitting in a table and having dinner and eating bread. We are told that in that sitting, as he was sitting, because it was a Sabbath day, there was a man who was sick and then Jesus healed him. This healing prompted a debate amongst the Pharisees. They started arguing with him and Jesus convinced them and, and he started to teach them about the importance of loving God more than following the Sabbath day. As we read in verse 15, even though it's not our uh, main verse, but I just want to be, uh, lay a foundation as a build up to our main verse. In verse 15, we are told that as he was teaching and, and, and explaining to them, one of the Pharisees who was sitting on a table said, responded to Jesus and he said, Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. And in hearing these words, verse 16 said, And Jesus said to him, A certain man gave, gave a great supper and invited many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. Verse 18, it says, But they all with one accord began to make excuses. I just want to explain this parable in this following way. We see here there's mentioning of the three main things. The first thing that is mentioned is a man who prepared a great feast. The second thing that is mentioned is the people who responded to this invitation by making excuses. In other words, they declined the invitation. And lastly, the third thing that is said here is that after they declined, then the man who had initially prepared the, the feast sent them out to go in the streets and collect other people so that the house may be full. So we're going to look at those three things to check what they mean, what they represent. Hallelujah. Amen. So now we, we look at the first thing, which is a great feast. The Bible says this man had prepared a great feast. Now the word feast means a joyous occasion. Whenever we are told about the feast, we know that it is a joyous moment. It is a moment of celebration. It is a moment of celebrating. It is a moment of happiness and joy. Yeah. This feast here, because it is a joyous celebration, it represents the kingdom of God. Because the kingdom of God, it is a place of rejoicing. That's why the Bible says the kingdom of God is all about joy and peace. It's not about eating, but it's joy and peace. In Revelation 21 verse 4, the Bible reads, it says, And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and shall, there shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no crying, and there shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. This refers to the eschatology time where God has done everything. He has created the new earth, the new heaven. And in that kingdom, there would be no more death, there would be no more tears, no more crying, no more sorrow. But all would be joy and celebration. Mm -hmm. So this great feast year that the Bible is talking about is, talking to, uh, is referring to the kingdom of God where we shall rejoice everlastingly. Hallelujah. Amen. The second thing that I want us to look at is the responses of the people who were invited into this feast. It says they all declined. The first one said, I have bought a piece of land, so I must go and inspect it. The second one says, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I want to test them. And the last one says, I have married a wife, so I cannot come. So these three people are all responding differently, but there is one thing common about them. They are all declining the invitation. The Bible tells us that after they declined, that the master who had prepared the feast was very angry. Perhaps we need to ask ourselves, why was he angry? Hallelujah. Mm. He was angry because the Bible says he had prepared a great feast. 
This was not a normal feast. It was not an average feast. Yeah. It was a great feast. Mm -hmm. So when he declined, perhaps he had put so much effort, money-wise and emotionally, to prepare the feast. So when they had declined, it was understandable, a great disappointment to him. Now, these three men who all declined, even though